Hello to all traders and welcome to uh, another free webinar provided to you by FX Primus. I hope you're doing well, wherever you're watching us from today. Again, my name is Stavros Tusios. I am the market specialist here at FX Primus in uh, Lemesu. FX Primus is globally acclaimed for offering one of the fastest and most secure online trading environments available anywhere in the forex industry. Our extra measures and safety have positioned us at the front runner in responsible trading, and we are now setting new standards in safety amongst our counterparts in the forex industry. The company enables clients of all experience levels to trade over 120 instruments, including currency pairs, commodities, CFDs and indices. You can too discover an award-winning safe environment founded on the proven philosophy of success through security. FX Primus sets the benchmark in safety for its uh, industry-leading safety mechanisms. We were the first to offer client fund insurance coverage of up to 2.5 million euros per claim and offer third-party monitoring for client withdrawals by Budica Client Trust. In FX Primus, we are going the extra mile to offer you protection unseen anywhere else in the industry. Now, a little bit about myself. I have um, traded professionally for over a year and have also successfully traded um, from my home desk for two, three years uh, successfully and have decided um, to um, you know, take this uh, step further by entering the Forex market here in uh, Limassol as a Forex market specialist. I decided to do so so that I can pass my knowledge to people that are just starting or to anyone that isn't yet um, you know, no, don't know everything about the Forex market. So today we will look at very important uh, parts of Forex trading, which relates mainly to the uh, global economies. Now, before we go ahead, um, please allow me to read out your risk disclaimer. Please note that Forex trading and trading in other ledger of Forex uh, products involves a significant level of risk and is not suitable for all investors. Trading in financial instruments may result in losses as well as profits and your losses can be greater than your initial invested capital. Before undertaking any such transactions, you should ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek independent advice if necessary. Any opinions, news, research, analysis, prices or other information contained on this webinar or linked to from this webinar are provided as mar general market commentary and do not constitute investment investment advice. FX Primus or its representatives do not accept liability of or any loss or damage, including without limitation to any loss of profit, which may arise directly or indirectly from use or uh, reliance on such information. Now back to our topic, fundamental analysis. If you are planning to trade or already trade or have traded, and you was uh, trying to figure out why the sudden move or some sort of wild fluctuation on a certain pair, that was probably due to some news affecting the price of the underlying um, security or asset you were actually looking at. If you know what fundamental analysis is good, you still have a lot to take for uh, this free webinar. And also get to ask any questions you may have at the end. Okay, so uh, let's kick this off then. So I'm going to start with explaining what exactly is fundamental analysis. Well, it really depends. It depends on what forces you are looking to or have to look into or examine in order to identify the strengths of an economy, an industry group, a company, or even a currency. For example, when one looks to do fundamental analysis on a stock or equity, so um, on a company pretty much, to see how healthy the firm is, you should look at the balance sheets, their profit and loss, the earnings per share, and other factors that influence the firm's value. Another example of an underlying force could be uh, the weather, as this could affect the price of corn, for example, or any other commodities. Okay. Now, when we're uh, talking about a country or a continent or an industry, we would have to analyze the related economic indicators, such as the uh, gross domestic product, inflation, uh, interest rates or production and purchasing indexes when we're talking about an industry. Saying all this, though, um, does not necessarily mean that this is the role of fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis deals with identifying all possible factors and forces that could have an effect on the price of an underlying asset and its value. 
This sort of analysis focuses on the economic, uh, the social, political and geopolitical factors, but that doesn't tell you much if you don't know what the fundamentals are, right? And how they affect a securities value. When it comes to currencies, though, there are a number of indicators that will tell you whether the value of a currency against another is going to go up or down not obviously uh, with guarantees. Uh, before we talk about uh, hawkish and dovish news and the actual indicators I find most important and relevant, um, let's have a look at microeconomics first. Okay. Now microeconomics is a field in economics that deals with the study of an economy and how it behaves as a whole. It focuses on trends in the economy or economic cycles which uh, we are going to see soon. So there's two schools of thought around economics, Keynesian and neoclassical. But even so, uh, the modern form stands from Keynes. John Maynard Keynes, you can see in the picture, explained the economies go into recession when supply is high and that they become inflationary when demand is high. This approach was presented in one of his books in 1936 during the Great Depression. Several of these economic policies have been applied by the United States since to stabilize output over business cycles, uh, monetary and fiscal policies, that is. So let's look into this a little deeper. Uh, Keynes, in a few words, said that economic output is influenced by aggregate demand, which is the demand for gross domestic product, and that it does not depend on the supply of goods and services. So think of this like that. When demand for final goods and services increases, the amount of goods and services purchased at the then prices increase while the GDP appreciates. Now, when demand falls, as consumers have done a lot of spending, then goods and services supplied are more than what is demanded from the market. Therefore, the prices of goods and services go down in an attempt to generate more demand. Once demand is generated, we go through the same cycle again. Now, with respect to economies, we will see a decrease in interest rates so that demand increases, uh, for example, on cheap loans or, or cheap goods and services. Uh, since purchases and spending will increase, inflation will rise, boosting the economy as uh, the currency, for example, will be more expensive. Once an appropriate level of inflation is reached, normally this is 2%, uh, at the target inflation of governments is normally 2%. Um, so when this inflation um, is, is reached, the governments will take action and increase interest rates in an attempt to stabilize the economy. Okay, hence the consumers will stop spending and a slowdown in business activity will be seen. So this is the goal of microeconomic policy. Now, let's look at the most important goals of microeconomic policy. Fast and constant economic growth. And for that, the economy must operate at full capacity, meaning full production output levels. Full employment. Pretty much every available resource is employed to produce goods and services. When I say pretty much, I mean you know, not 100% of the labor force. There is always someone looking for, uh, for a job or changing jobs. So we can never have 100%. Uh, full employment. Price stability. This is to control inflation at the target inflation rate of the government. When inflation is low, the purchasing power of consumers is high and vice versa, of course. A low inflation below the 2% target may help prices to remain stable. The lower, the better. Now, reducing economic equality. Trying to close the gap between high and low income groups, while at the same time ensuring that our people experience the same standards of living. Maintaining a foreign exchange position. The exchange rates do change according to supply and demand continuously. So currencies can be traded continuously on the foreign exchange. Now you may ask, why are these things important? Well, for the stabilization of the economic cycle and here's the prevention of economic disasters such as the one we saw back in 1936. Now you may ask, um, how does a government achieve stabilization of the economic cycle? Or better said, how, um, what, does, what tool does a government apply to ensure stabilization of the economic uh, cycle is achieved? It does this by fiscal and monetary policy. 
Fiscal policy promotes stability by sustaining aggregate demand and private sector incomes during an economic downturn and by moderating, moderating economic activity during periods of strong growth. It can be achieved through taxation, government spending, and also trade policies. Obviously, a rise in taxation could have an effect uh, to uh, specific groups excessively or change in trade policies uh, and how the government spends, of course. Now, monetary policy, on the other hand, controls the supply of money and is dictated by central banks by adjusting the interest rates to achieve some target inflation rates. This is pretty much how banks control liquidity to support economic growth. For example, if you follow the news, if you have been following the news lately, there is a lot of attention around the December's interest rate decision by FOMC members, as well as uh, attention around uh, Trump's tax uh, re report and the bill legislation, as they do affect inflation levels and how the firms are taxed. There is many new releases affecting the rate of an underlying asset, our security. The interest rate is the amount charged, charged by a lender to a borrower or else the cost of debt for the borrower. So this would be the rate of return for the lender. Banks decide on the rate of interest and this rate when uh, referred to by the banks is the overnight rate banks charge one another to lend. Interest rates are decided by bank members and they are announced by the head of the bank every month. Media, investors and all type of traders follow the, these types of announcements as the interest rate uh, force has an immediate impact on the exchange rate. That is either positive or negative and depends on the statement uh, of the head of the bank or the anticipation of it. Now, a hawkish uh, statement means that the members are concerned about inflation, which means that interest rates may see an increase in order to bring inflation lower near its target rate. With this form of tightening of monetary policy, purchasing power and spending will decline. Okay, hence the inflation is supposed to cool down. A dovish uh, statement is the opposite. So this means that the members of the bank are not concerned about inflation or are concerned about low inflation, which means that interest rates may see a decrease in order to bring inflation closer to the target rates. With this form of easing of monetary policy, purchasing power and spending will appreciate. Hence, inflation is supposed to rise. Interest rate decisions uh, taken by members of central banks, they do have a great impact on the economic activity of a country and its society, to the individual and also to the economy as a whole. Individuals who have loans or use a credit card with variable rates that are tied to the prime rate, which is the lowest level, the lowest rate of uh, interest at which money can be borrowed, um, they have payments solely depend on the rise or fall of the interest rates. So looking at the economy as a whole, and particularly the borrowers or anyone thinking of getting a loan, they may be more inclined or unwilling to take a loan depending on the rate. If the rates are high, the economic activity will slow down. For example, if interest rates increase, this will lead to a slowdown in the automobile industry, as not as many people are going to buy cars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when interest rates increase, consumers have less money to spend or cannot spend as much as before because everything becomes more expensive. They are unwilling to borrow as payments become more expensive. The ones that have borrowed and have variable rates need to pay more, which may sometimes also lead to defaults, which in turn um, in return leads to bad credit ratings and the availability of funds for both individuals and businesses is limited. That means that less money are supplied in an economy. Hence, inflation will also 
decrease, leading to a general slowdown in the economic activity and the economy of a country. Another important economic indicator, or call it news if you may, is the GDP or the gross domestic product. The gross domestic product is the aggregate value of all goods and services measured within a set period. It is important as it measures the total output of the economy year on year, and hence how the economy performs as a whole. In addition, it is important because it is used to predict and measure economic activity in GDP percentage. In essence, to predict and measure the size of the economy, in few words. There, is, um, there are two types of GDP, nominal and real. Nominal is um, the non-adjusted for inflation figure. Real is the adjusted figure. When real GDP has been in a slowdown for two consecutive quarters, the economy is considered to be in a recession. Okay. Now let's look into another important indicator, uh, the employment levels. This indicator, uh, I must say, that directly affect individuals and the society. The government's role or goal in terms of employment is to ensure that the country is in full employment. Again, by saying full employment, I don't mean 100% of the force should be employed, but 100% of the available force. People who are looking for a job and cannot find one belong to the group of unemployed people. The closer the number of unemployed to zero, the better for the economy, for the individuals and also for the society. Now, the people who work, plus the people who are available to work, are together making the labor force. The unemployment rate is the unemployment people divided by the labor force. For example, in the United States in October, as per the last report published, the unemployment rate was 4.1%. And we can use this simple formula to find out the, uh, how they calculate the unemployment rate. Next the uh, consumer price index, known as CPI. If you remember what I said earlier when talking about microeconomics and macro policy, I said that price stability uh, controls inflation, pretty much. So when inflation is low, the purchasing power of consumers is high, and vice versa. This indicator is used to measure the average change in the price paid for a basket of consumer goods and services in an economy. The components of the CPI, when I say for a basket of consumers of goods and services in a few words, are helping with estimating the inflation levels on eight different groups of goods and services associated with the cost of living. This in return gives governments a good measure of the cost of the goods and services across the country on a monthly basis. Know that any changes in the price levels represent inflation. Whether this is low or high, this is a different story. What is inflation then? Think that one euro today won't be the same as one euro next year, and the price of euro last year was certainly not the same as now. Now, if the price of euro is higher, this means that the change in the euro denotes the difference in which prices of goods and services changed upward for, while the purchasing power declined. This change in the inflation shows the rate of change in the CPI. Deflation is the opposite effect. When the data of euro, for example, falls, when the rate of uh, data, there is also hyperinflation. When prices rise tremendously or inflation is just getting completely out of control that it just makes no meaning while the currency is being devaluated. Now, hyperinflation occurs when there is big money supply that is not supported by the uh, gross domestic product growth, the GDP growth. And this results in an imbalance in the supply and demand for money. Investors also look at um, into different financial instruments to make decisions on investments and these decisions are based on the instrument's performance. For example, equities or stocks give the investors uh, ownership 
in a company, a share in a company. If the company is performing well, or better, or better put, the majority of the big companies are performing well, then this is a good sign for the overall economy. The overall index, for example, could be something like the S&P 500 or NASDAQ. Okay? Bonds. Now, bonds are instruments associated with debt. Investors buy debt, which means they become the lenders of either government or companies with a make with an aim to make a return on the rate they charge to loan to the government or the company over a fixed period of time at a fixed rate. Now, bonds are always issued by the debtor. Okay, the rate the lenders are earning is called yield. Now, just to summarize on the most important indicators, if in terms of GDP, one can follow the releases of retail sales, durable goods orders, manufacturing and services PMIs, industrial production, housing starts, home sales, house price index, and factory orders. In terms of unemployment, we have the non-farm payroll, the employment, unemployment rate, the jobless claims, and the claim and count. In terms of inflation, we talked about the interest rates and the CPI already. Add on to those, add on to those the PPI and the wage growth as it's encouraging or discouraging customer consumer confidence. Uh, all those events can be followed on a daily basis on any economic calendar. Okay, you can visit our economic calendar at fxpromise.com under trader tools and you can filter results or set a particular event during a specific time frame if you wish to do so just to look at the history of a specific um, indicator, economic indicator, how has it performed, and maybe, you know, maybe work out even uh, some sort of financial modeling in order to predict what is going to happen uh, on an um, uh, anticipated event coming up. Now, let's see how all this applies to Forex. As I've explained during this, um, this webinar, economic data and releases do affect the markets in different ways. Okay, what you gotta ask yourself is certain microeconomic related questions to see whether the economy is improving or worsening. For example, is inflation rising or falling? Is unemployment better than last month or worse off? Then of course, the above factors have to be compared with a figure in order to identify they have improved or fallen, right? So those figures are the economists' expectations. For example, if GDP growth is expected to come out at 3.3%, comes out at 3%, despite the previous release came out at 3 this is bad news, okay? Lastly, you could look at the economic events with a global eye, if you may. So compare the same indicators of different countries, countries that have been both either improving or worsening, of course, so you have a good measurement, a good comparison. Now, what you can do with economic indicators is use them to your advantage. Generally speaking, and as mentioned just on the previous slide, positive results are good for the exchange rate or for the currency. No, the positive results do not necessarily mean the use of words such as low means bad, okay? Try to read data for what they are. For example, a low unemployment rate is of course good for the economy as more people are actually working, okay? It is always good to try and understand the workings of, uh, of the indicators. Read about them, why they're used, how they're used, what they measure, and how strong is their impact on their respective currency or even other currencies. Now, in order to keep up with what's happening in the world of economics, okay, and hence in the world of the foreign currency exchange as well, always keep an eye on the economic calendar. Even if you don't trade fundamentals, as you would want to avoid having any open trades or trading during the release of a high impact report. Also, I would suggest that in case you do trade during the news, to avoid going into the markets by blindly following the headline numbers. You know, um, revisions are always expected, or at least should be always expected. Also, sometimes headlines aren't followed. And this has been noticed in the market a number of times, especially when trading the non-farm payroll. Okay, so this, uh, with this last slide, I'm now able to take any questions you may have. So please go ahead if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer.
Patrick. Any questions, guys? I can see some hands up. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions. Regarding the uh, North Korea missile launch, where would you rank that in fundamental impact? Okay, Patrick, uh, this is, um, there is two different types of, of news, okay? The one is the economic indicators, which is looked at, and there is the, um, the other fundamentals, uh, the other fundamental variables that has to do with the news and media. That has to do with, uh, we spoke about geopolitical risk and political risk, anything that has to do with NK firing uh, missiles, uh, President Trump um, making some remarks on uh, for North Korea or threatening or, you know, talking about, um, you know, like the fire and fury common that was done a month ago or so. Um, this is categorized under uh, fundamentals, but is on the geopolitical uh, risk. Now, those types of events where you normally see that investors tend to leave the risk on uh, assets, which is pretty much dollar and everything that is um, um, a uh, for the foreign exchange. And they will go for um, the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen and the gold, which are supposed to be safe havens. Okay, so when there is anything um, that adds to uh, the political or geopolitical risks into the media, uh, normally you will see gold rising first. Okay. Hello, this is Abdel. Okay, how? Hello, Abdel. Consider uh, fundamental factors. What do you consider to trade cryptos? Uh, okay, um, cryptos is not the subject of this topic, but I will give you a few a few tips. If you if you want to uh, note down, uh, crypto trading is completely different to what is happening in the in the markets in the economic markets in the market. There is no macroeconomic perspective sort of. Um, everything is on the micro level, on the company level. Um, plus, um, you know you will see that there is no interest rate decisions, there is no GDP growth, there is none of these indicators. The indicators that there are um, you know, there might be in the future, actually, I'm thinking of is something that would be for a company because um, most of the uh, cryptocurrencies that they are traded today, behind them, there is a company always. OK, now, um, fundamental news might have to do with what they are, what the team is actually posting on Twitter, for example. They might um, publish a, a road, the roadmap and what they are planning to do in the future, in the near future that would be able to cause uh, a surge onto their respected cryptocurrency because it's good for for the value of the company, for example. It might be an addition of a new member that he is highly respected, for example, in the cryptocurrency world or in the blockchain world, a new member added into the team of a specific uh, cryptocurrency firm. Uh, it might be anything else related. Now, there is also a lot of... Um, a lot of new additions of ICOs and new uh, companies coming in with, which are trying to solve problems. And now those, most of them are not traded as CFDs. So I'm not going to go through this. Okay, uh, Abdel, if you have any more questions, uh, you can ask, but um, pretty much this is all the reason, the fundamentals. Uh, another addition, just as I remembered, is the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. They are going to introduce Bitcoin futures very soon. I think it might be on the 11th of September of December. It's not yet finalized. Uh, so this was also a fundamental factor, okay, uh, that pushed the price of Bitcoin and all the other uh, alts high. Okay, uh, GDP is calculated for a year. So how can we interpret this in the current range? GDP may grow this year or two. Okay, uh, there is um, Gotham. Okay, is is calculated and the, the release is on a yearly basis or on a quarter basis. But the one that matters mostly is the yearly. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that there is no uh, measures in between this time. Okay. So uh, you can look at the quarters and find out information. Uh, also, um, you don't really 
need to look, okay, you can look at the previous GDP releases so that you compare, you can expect, um, you can measure um, from the economics, uh, from the economist side, you can measure uh, what you can expect. You can calculate what you can accept, what, what growth you can expect. And now, if we're talking about the GDP as, as, a, as a whole, you know, there is a whole of uh, other uh, number of indicators that you can look into, as we said on the previous slides. Uh, there we go. So you can look at the retail sales, durable goods orders, manufacturing PMI, industrial production. All those numbers are related to the gross domestic product of, of a country. Okay. Uh, Gotham, is this clear? Please let me know if you have any more questions. Uh, how would affect allowing to trade crypto futures? Um, this is not certain. Um, because this is the scenario, uh, introducing crypto, uh, introducing futures in Bitcoin uh, will mean that a lot of financial institutions and institutional investors will jump in and add to the liquidity of the market. So the market capitalization is, uh, you know, may increase. Uh, but um, if you consider this as a CFD, okay, it will be. It might be, um, you know, uh, we might need to see an increase in liquidity. We cannot know for sure, though. Now, if you look at it at the cryptocurrency perspective, you will also be able to short because cryptocurrency trading in digital exchanges is not something that you can short. You can only buy for now. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'm actually available for a few more minutes, guys. So if you have any more questions, uh, please uh, go ahead and ask. I see a lot of hands raised during the webinar. Um, but, okay, shall we on? Yes, please, Gotham, you have another question? With regards to the Brexit negotiation progress, how would you suggest that we factor the intel uh, into fundamental analysis on GDP, GBP and Euro prospects? Are there any past examples of such a situation? Um, I wouldn't say so, Patrick. Um, obviously, there is other um, historic events that they have caused a uh, tremendous move in the markets, but I wouldn't say anything like this has happened before. We have had a uh, yeah, very huge drop, decline in the, on pounds uh, on the day of the Brexit uh, vote when the results came out and also had the flash crash, which took the pound even lower. Now, with regards to the negotiation progress, um, I think there is uh, quite a few variables that you can look at. Um, from what I saw this morning in the markets, apparently this has been uh, a negotiation, um, a sort of an agreement uh, of the Brexit deal. And Telegraph mentions that it will be somewhere near 70, 45 and 55 uh, billion uh, pounds. Now, this is obviously, this is not a complete figure. It's not a final figure, but uh, it was good news for the pound. And this is the reason the pound went up uh, over the past few days. Actually, it's around 133, 134 right now. So, um, it's very important to follow those, uh, to follow in this space what's happening in general with the Brexit, because it is going to affect the price of the pound on an immediate effect. Um, plus, um, it's likely to also affect the euro because the United Kingdom, of course, is in the in the in the in Europe uh, so far, at least, uh, and it's going to have an effect on the European economy as a whole. Uh, so, Patrick, if this uh, helps for an answer, uh, if you're not satisfied, please please uh, ask uh, more in details. Uh, could we get a copy of this presentation? Uh, this presentation will go online. This webinar will go online. Okay, so uh, there is nothing to worry about. It will be online probably by tomorrow on our YouTube channel. Okay, type FX Primus and you should be able to find it. Uh, when the BOC will do the rate hike again. Okay, from what I remember, uh, Yin, the Bank of Canada raised uh, hikes twice in this year. And that was after, if I'm not mistaken, seven years of keeping them steady and holding them unchanged. Now, uh, 
obviously the economic data did support um, both of the decisions to raise fair rates. Uh, but I'm not really sure that we are going to see another rate hike soon. Uh, definitely not this year, uh, but this is, of course, my opinion, right? It's nothing to do with, uh, you know, it's not to be considered as uh, advice. Um, so looking at the BOC, I would expect at least, uh, uh, you know, one, two, three quarters maybe to go past in order to see another rate. Now, you also need to keep an eye, of course, on the economic growth and the economic aspects uh, of, the, uh, of the Canadian uh, um, economy as a whole. Uh, you know, keep looking at the inflation rates uh, and the housing uh, market. What is also going on with the oil? Because Canada is a very big producer, and uh, the Canadian dollar is very uh, affected by the oil prices. And pretty much, um, I think it will be uh, it will it will take a while to see another hike. To be honest, Yin. Any more questions, guys? <clears throat> Go thumb. I can see raising hands. I will wait for a few more minutes. I want to stress um, how important it is to always keep an eye on the economic calendar. If you are trading or thinking of trading or probably have traded as well, and uh, seen big wild fluctuations in the markets is because of the news. It's not good being into an open position when there is news coming or there is news around the corner, especially if you are day trading. These moves can be 40, 50 pips, pips and they can, cause, uh, they can cause big losses, okay? So always uh, check this as, uh, you know, Put put this on your uh, on your on your plan before you open trades. Uh, always check the economic calendar and check if there is any news coming up because you wouldn't want to be in the middle of uh, a release coming out. When would you place orders slightly before or after announcements? Uh, okay, well, uh, the best solution is not to trade at all during the news around the news before or after because the markets are very volatile uh, slippage is increased spreads are increased you might see the effect of a whipsaw if you don't know what the whipsaw is uh, you can go on ahead on our youtube and type nfp recordings or nfp uh, webinars and you will find um, our nfp webinars because we do this every month we have a live session on nfp so you will find what the whipsaw is and you'll find then the types of trades that you can open. Uh, now, the safest way, again, as I said, is not to trade at all. But one of the safest would be to um, to open a, any position after the announcement. And that would be only, of course, if the uh, market is offering an opportunity. What will normally uh, happen is that you will see an extension of price. If, for example, the euro dollar, uh, euro was positive, you would see euro going up. And after two, three hours, you would be able to identify some sort of exhaustion as a pattern. So you would see two, three big candles, but you know, as the hours goes past, the candles would be smaller. And at the end, you'll probably be something like a dodgy candle, indecision candle, as well as called. This is when it's likely for the market to have a small correction or a reversal, if you may. And um, this is normally when it is good uh, or the safest way, let's say, to trade, uh, to open a position after the news. But again, I would, uh, I would recommend to stay away from news because they are very, very, very risky. And uh, we have seen that uh, in a lot of uh, cases, in a lot of uh, economic releases, that uh, the markets are not really following the headline numbers or even the actual result. Sometimes fundamental factors do not match technical indicators. Which would you trust more? Okay, this has to be um, 
Um, I suppose by fundamental factors, you mean probably the uh, the actual move of on on the on the price. I would have guessed so. If that's the case, then there has to be a combination of the two. Now, if I assume that you're talking about the impact to a certain uh, underlying asset, and uh, you know that sometimes fundamental analysis factors. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I would have guessed that um, obviously the technicals are there for um, you know for the traders to use. Uh, the technicals are pretty much the market's mass psychology. So traders were either respect them and you know reach that point, reject, have a rejection, and then return reverse, all or price will either break those levels and carry on higher. Okay, this is a game of um, of uh, combining uh, price action and technical indicators or support and resistance levels. Mainly, it would be, especially when you are on uh, when you're if you're ever on a position on well, during the news. The uh, number one tool that you you should use is support and resistances. Okay, those levels are normally respected either for entry or exit levels okay ATN did this um, answer your question yes thanks okay no problem Um, I'm going to wait for two more minutes, guys, if there is no more questions. <clears throat> uh, please remember also that uh, in case you're listening to this on the recording uh, in a few days, or in case you have uh, forgotten or you remembered something to ask, feel free to email me. My email is stavros.tusios at fxprimers.com okay let me just write that here for you feel free to uh, send me an email if you have any questions okay Patrick Okay, guys, I would like to thank everybody for attending this uh, free educational webinar. Uh, there will be a series of uh, more educational webinars on technical analysis, on technical indicators and others. So make sure, please, you keep an eye on your emails because we will be sending you um, emails for uh, registration. Okay. Once again, uh, please be very careful if you're trading in news, when trading the news, make sure you use your stop losses and you take profit levels. It's very dangerously not to. And if you have any questions related to these as well, feel free to email me. I'm here for uh, supporting you for any sort of uh, um, issues or, you know, um, walls you may find in front of you. So uh, thank you very much. Have a nice evening and see you soon.